I just got out of Miller. It is the 20th of December, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. It is a gorgeous afternoon. It is bright, it is clear, and it feels really nice out. I'm enjoying this. Today, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I had a viewer question that um, I think there's some good discussion to have, but more importantly, I think I'm gonna need to reach out to you guys to get some feedback from you so that we can provide this. This is an area I really don't have any experience with. And uh, I think our community is going to be able to answer quite a bit of questions. I hope everybody had a really nice holiday over the last few days. This should be uh, being seen right as you're getting back to work from everything and settling in in the middle of the week. It should be Wednesday morning, I think, when you're seeing this. So welcome back to work. So most people probably came back yesterday. And uh, we're going to get to today's question right after the bump. Okay, so some viewers wrote to me and they wanted to know about volunteer opportunities. Now I want to quickly answer a question they didn't ask or didn't imply, which is if you're young and you're a backpacker, say you're 18 to 22 and you want to be able to stay longer anywhere, what do you do? I, I think most backpackers who are asking this question already know the answer. And that is you can call up hostels and possibly some other things like maybe tour companies uh, that have some need or some utility of using people who would also be their customers. This is a very common thing that is done by backpackers or similar very young people who are not yet in a career mode and they're not really looking to make money. They're looking to basically reduce the cost of travel to zero so that they can more or less stay someplace indefinitely. And this is really common. Uh, so if you find hostels, um, especially ones that cater to expats, there are plenty of hostels that are, for example, just low cost hotels for Nicaraguans to stay in different places. And you may find some that never have an expat at all those probably uh, won't have accommodations for uh, for volunteers. But if you find those that uh, especially are part of the backpacking circuit, backpacking circuit, the backpacking circuit, um, then you're, you're very likely to, to run into some opportunities. Now, uh, whether they will have availability, what their requirements are gonna be, that stuff could be all over the place, but it is really common for uh, younger, uh, young adult travelers uh, to do this. Uh, and quite often you can get room and board for a week up to maybe a few months. Uh, and, and you won't really make money under normal circumstances, but you normally don't have a really strenuous job and you get to stay in someplace really interesting and work for the hostel that you're staying in. But the real question that we got today was from an older couple, more mature couple, not old, but older than uh, 20 year olds who are looking for a longer stay. This is a, uh, a couple who's looking uh, potentially towards retirement and possibly living in Nicaragua, or maybe they were actually planning. I don't know if they're like definitely coming to Nicaragua or just uh, considering it, but they were wondering if they do come to Nicaragua and they're no longer working, they are retired or will be at the time that they come. Would there be uh, volunteer opportunities where they'd be able to, or, or what would volunteer opportunities be, where they'd be able to help out and, and contribute back to the Nicaraguan community, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. Thank you for wanting to do that for sure on behalf of the country that that stuff really does uh, potentially make a big difference. Um, there's going to be a challenge here, and I want to talk about this just a little bit, and that is that traditionally there were lots of volunteer uh, opportunities, uh, but most of those were through NGOs, non-government organizations. And for those who are not familiar, uh, an NGO is essentially a nonprofit, just like you would have in the United States, except uh, an NGO is a specific type of nonprofit uh, who attempts to fill a role generally associated with the government. So for example, if you were in the United States and you wanted to have an NGO, you could have an NGO that provided health care, for example. Oh, there's no uh, national health care. There are people who fall through the cracks. So we're going to start a non-government organization that steps up and does what the government should have done for its citizens. That is an example of an NGO, a nonprofit uh, that is not fulfilling uh, a government role, someone who's doing good work in theory, but not in a spot where a government would be expected to do it as part of their core function, is just a regular nonprofit. Here in Nicaragua and a lot of countries in the region um, and around the world, really, uh, you don't tend to get a lot of nonprofits. That's not too much of a thing, mostly because nonprofits, uh, 
to function in a non-NGO mode or a geo mode, no, in an NNGO mode, um, they really require a high degree of local affluence. You're unlikely to, for example, find a nonprofit that encourages better libraries, right? You could consider that a government function, but in many cases it's not. It's just, you know, some people want to promote books, help with uh, getting authors more visibility, whatever, that can be fine, right? But they're uh, functioning much more as a, a straightforward nonprofit. Well, you're not going to very likely get investors from or donations from, say, the United States or Canada or Western Europe towards something like that in a place like Nicaragua, they would only do it in their own country. But if they're going to be given donations or, or a government is going to be sponsoring something uh, in another country, it, it generally needs to fill a really core function, water, uh, sewage, uh, education, uh, power supply, infrastructure, um, those types of things, very core functions. Uh, and so anytime you're dealing with smaller, lower income countries, typically what you have is NGOs uh, as the specific form of nonprofits that will exist. The problem with NGOs anywhere in the world is twofold. All nonprofits suffer from the general problem of often being uh, me uh, mechanisms of money laundering. Now, this is no not bearing on where they are or what type they are. If you've ever worked for a nonprofit and paid any attention, dollars to donuts, you've noticed either outright theft or money laundering, one way or another. And it may not be laundering from the government; it may just be laundering from the d the donors. Right? It is very common to just take in donations, claim it's being used for things, and funnel money to your friends, family, or whatever back into your own pockets. Uh, and and as someone who works as a business advisor who has spent my career dealing with lots of different companies and has in many cases gone to nonprofits and offered to volunteer, you find in the United States, just normal everyday nonprofits in the United States, the chances that they're not money laundering are so rare that you could almost think of the term nonprofit as just a proxy word for a money laundering organization. That's basically what they do. Most people won't consider forming a nonprofit unless there's some benefit to them. And that benefit generally comes in that system. There's a few other benefits to be had. There's lots of ways to milk donors for their money, to get government grants that don't really go to the things that it's meant to do and actually just line your pockets. And the part of the problem is, uh, and, and I talk about this in my business channels, but for those who are shocked and somehow think this is surprising, it is in no way surprising. This is absolutely what you should expect when you deal with a nonprofit. It is because they are a business. By definition, a business's purpose is driven by the goal of profits. When you make a nonprofit business, it doesn't make sense. You have a you have a jarring uh, theoretical issue where it can't define what its role is. And you can say, well, but we're going to define a role for it. Say, this organization's job is to make clean drinking water. Well, sure, but how do you define uh, success? How do you measure things? How, nothing that we normally do as humans, as drive, especially in a capitalist uh, economy, makes sense in that way. If you were to put a uh, dollar value on clean water and said, okay, whoever can produce the most clean water gets paid this money, you'd have a completely different thing. Those would be for-profit solving of the issue. Using a nonprofit, especially in a society like the United States, where you are very capitalist and people believe in capitalism very strongly, nonprofits basically laugh in the face of capitalism and say, aha, when it comes to these really important functions, profits won't drive us, altruism will. And the whole purpose of capitalism is that we believe altruism won't drive things, so the only way to, to get good results is to put a price tag on whatever the result is you want. If you want clean water, put a price tag on it, and private companies trying to earn that money will do so at the lowest possible price, and all you have to do is make sure that they deliver what you ordered. So fundamentally, nonprofits exist because they don't believe in capitalism, or worse, they do and they're just acknowledging that they're trying to skirt that system so they can move money around however they want to. There is some benefits to the mechanism that you don't have to pay taxes in some cases, not always, um, most, and that you're able to take donations. Uh, but those are generally bad things. I don't believe in donating to nonprofits. I think it's almost always a really horrible thing. And at best, it's just not a great thing. Um, I heavily encourage you, do not donate to nonprofits. Um, if, find a for-profit or find an actual government or an actual something that is trying 
trying to do the thing you want to support, absolutely go support those things. Donating to nonprofits is not the way to do it. That does not just not get the money to the people who need it most. It gives the money to the people who are stealing from the ones who need it most. No one is a bigger enemy of the people you're trying to help than the people who are lying about trying to help them, right? That's just universally a truth. Now, the second problem with nonprofits is that they have to have employees. Now, if you had a true meaning, uh, an, a nonprofit where they were actually attempting to do the right thing, one of the things that they would never have is employees. All the people who worked for them would just volunteer, right, for a lot of reasons, but that's what you would want. And so if there's ever going to be a good nonprofit, it would be just a bunch of volunteers, including the CEO, including the board and all that. They would believe in the mission. They would be desirous of helping the mission. The last thing you want is someone leading the organization who doesn't believe in the, in the goal but wants money, and then all these volunteers who believe in the goal and work for a person who doesn't, right? Who's best to be the CEO? Certainly not a person who needs to be paid by one of these organizations. So that, by definition, could not be the case. Anyone willing to get paid doesn't believe in the mission. If you are the CEO of uh, an organization that, that takes blood and, and delivers blood to organizations, if you believed in that mission, you wouldn't be willing to take that salary because you'd be taking the money directly from the capability of delivering that blood. You are the antithesis of the thing we need, right? So that's an easy way to, to gauge this stuff, right? So, but one of the problems, so all these nonprofits, they have to have employees. Employees are like microcosms of capitalism. They take jobs because they're going to get paid. That is what makes them take the job in the first place. But nonprofits can't pay as well as the private sector. Private uh, uh, nonprofits can't uh, promote the same. They have all these problems. So you have this system where they're having employees in a mechanism that shouldn't have employees. So it ends up with layer after layer of this problem of people functioning in a for-profit system, whether it's the overall economy, whether it's the managers of the company, whether it's the, the in-the-trenches employees, everybody is acting like they're for-profit, but claiming to be in a non-profit. So this creates this huge problem. So what you end up seeing in the real world, if you ever go work at one, universally, go in and try to volunteer in key positions. If you have some expertise and they are lacking that and you could show up, this is the first thing that every time I go into one, this is what ends up happening. We offer to volunteer. They say, ooh, volunteer, that sounds great. We'll have this bigger budget. And the moment we do and they realize we're actually professionals and we'll actually identify where money is being stolen, they instantly shut it down. Oh my gosh, no, you're out of here. We don't take volunteers, right? Nonprofits who refuse volunteers, they all refuse volunteers. If you go into, now, if you wanna just sort clothes in a clothing donation uh, place, sure, they're gonna take volunteers. You wanna serve meals at a homeless shelter? Yep, they're gonna take volunteers. But you want to volunteer as a comptroller, as a CFO, as an IT person, they will never let you do any of those roles because those roles expose money laundering immediately. Go into IT, which is often where I am, and instantly you're like, wow, why are you paying triple for every single thing in here? Every, almost everything you do could be done for free. In fact, companies will donate everything that you have here and you won't have to pay a thing. Oh, you're out the door. Why? because all those things are paying somebody's cousin. Oh, it was my cousin owns the company that sold us the computers. That's why we paid $1,000 per computer instead of 300. We don't need someone to manage this really expensive email system, but it looks good on the books and no one's gonna argue with it. So there's $50,000 a year going out to an entire role that is either not needed or someone would do for free as an afterthought, because it takes no time at all. Oh, we don't have all this expertise because anyone with that expertise would almost certainly have an ethical problem with all the things we do. So we have these huge gaps in capability and it just goes on and on and on. And it's really easy to spot where just in this one department, and it's happening everywhere, but this one department, just like that, if you come in and volunteer, it is hard to hide that money is being just moved out to these external companies in ways that there's no way to audit. You can't actually sue them because it's not actually illegal to steal all the donations through that mechanism. It's completely legal. You can go start a nonprofit that does any random thing you want. You don't have to ever produce the thing you're saying you're going to do. You can hire all your friends. You can pay them way above what they could possibly earn. They don't need to have any skills. They don't need to prove that they're able to do those jobs. And if you really want to move big money around, 
around, hire outside firms to do the things you need them to do. They'll probably do the thing technically, but they'll charge you for lots of things you don't need. They'll sell you things at inflated prices. They'll work at inflated prices. And then they will very happily in almost all circumstances, pay for your vacations, buy you a car, give you a beach house that you can use whenever you want. One way or another, there are ways to move outrageous amounts of money to third-party organizations, and because it shows up as a real line item and because it's not an actual government agency, and often even when it is, you are allowed to do that. And so that is a handy way for, and this happens in government, in U.S. government all the time, right? Constantly, it is the assumed mode that that's how so many government officials get the benefits, the things that make it worthwhile being a government official. You don't make enough salary as a government official to justify taking that job in most cases, but you're given the availability of shuffling so much money around that you could make three or four times what your salary is by simply having a buddy move some money and buying the thing that you want. Right. You don't need to have a golf club membership if a friend's your you know goes and you're always able to go on their membership. Right. However, there's lots of ways to hide this and it's completely legal in most cases. And you just need to be aware this is why you don't want to be donating money to these things. This is why you want to be really careful while you're where you're volunteering, because you easily are not doing the good you think you're doing. Um, and it leads us to the next point. Here in Nicaragua, there was a big push to crack down on these organizations that may have been money laundering. They have very strict guidelines here in the country and tons of nonprofits simply declined to follow them. And this is a constant thing where they're uh, investigating one after another and it just takes a lot of time. And pretty much every time they come to an NGO, there are exceptions, yes, but almost every time that they come to one, they look into it and either the books clearly show that they're doing something illegal or they refuse to hand over the books and opt to be treated as illegal, uh, which generally means fleeing the country ahead of any ruling coming, um, which is basically just admission that that is exactly what they were doing. And of course, they go back to the U.S. or wherever they came from, and there's no problem because it's legal there. Here, money laundering, doing things to hide where money is flowing in and where it is flowing out from in a nonprofit is a really big deal. Partially, because foreign uh, uh, countries uh, often will use NGOs, fund them from the foreign government, and use them to attempt to enact changes that they want, influence a country. Maybe it's in a good way, maybe it's in a bad way, but in a country like the United States, there's no country on earth that's able, not even China, I know people are like, China can, and they can't, right? No one can pay enough to NGOs in the United States where you could heavily influence the country. You could minorly influence it. I mean, anyone can just make an influence, right? But if you want to really enact change, it's going to take a scale that basically no one can do. So the U.S. has no fear of that. If you have a tiny country like Nicaragua with giant countries like the United States nearby who have a very strong interest in influencing things and unlimited resources to do so, the United States, uh, to, to, to put it in perspective, if every single penny earned in Nicaragua was thrown at influencing the United States, the U.S. would not notice. Literally, they really wouldn't. The opposite way, the United States is able to throw an amount of money that would devastate Nicaragua and could undermine any, absolutely anything that they wanted with a budget that the Americans also wouldn't notice. You wouldn't even have to record it anywhere. If they simply, you know, increase the toilet seat budget in the Pentagon by 1%, they could overthrow nearly any government in the world simply with that tiny bit of extra money from the toilet seat budget that nobody would audit because it's only a 1% move. That's how easy it is to hide giant amounts of money in the U.S. system. And I, it's a funny thing to say, but toilet seats for the Pentagon is a very large line item that to the U.S. budget no one even thinks about. They make fun of it sometimes, but it's not really enough to think about. But to small countries like here in, in Central America, that budget can be uh, comparable to a national budget. Maybe not actually as big as, but large enough to may be able to create real mayhem. So there's a real need here to audit nonprofits and other things, but nonprofits especially, because they are so easy to use for money laundering. They're so easy to use to hide nefarious activities. And they are so commonly a remote arm of a foreign government. And not to pick on the U.S., lots of countries do this, right? And here there are NGOs from countries all over the world, and many of them are doing really questionable things. You never, almost never, see them on the ground doing something good. I'm not saying they never do. It's just very rare. 
it's you never see an NGO going around building schools. You never see them putting in new septic systems. You never see them digging new water supply systems. You never see them building uh, green energy systems. Not that we really need that, but you know, there's all these things you could be doing really well as an NGO if that's what you really wanted to do. If you really wanted to make a difference, you could. You never see that happening. But you see tons of NGOs who are have really questionable missions. Oh, we're here to um, influence the, and they'll, sometimes they'll outright say that they're here for really weird things. And you're like, holy cow, that is so weird. And in the United States, sure, they could go after them, but it takes a lot. It would undermine how government officials make their money. Uh, so they don't want to expose that. So And it's not a risk or not a very big one. So in the United States, they really don't care about it, not in the way they do here. And here, they care about it a lot. And so there's been a lot of auditing. And that brings us to a lot of the organizations and, and the modes through which you would generally do volunteer work like is being suggested for a retired couple who want to make a difference. You want to be careful because a lot of the places that would be willing to take you or would advertise that they're looking for volunteers may be organizations you do not want to be associated with. Whether it's maybe they're doing good work, but they refuse to open their books. Maybe they're not doing good work, but they seem like they are. Maybe they're just outright terrible people. There's all kinds of things. And maybe they're a great organization who has opened their books. If you're going to do that, I would really dot your I's, cross your T's, make sure that they have been audited and came out clean before you become associated with them. The last thing you want to do is associate with an organization that is a foreign, potentially criminal organization, which is exactly how they'll get classified. And yes, you might be okay. Look, I was just a volunteer. I had no idea. That might be fine. It's probably fine. But that is a risk that I wouldn't want to just jump into. So I really want to know from my audience, um, do you know of good places where you could volunteer, where there are organizations that are trustworthy, that are vetted, that are uh, maybe laundering money, but on a very small scale to the point where it's, it's, it's under the radar and they don't care. Um, I, it's hard to suggest that no one is, is money laundering. Once you're taking donations, it's basically inevitable. There's so many people with their hands in the pot, someone is gonna shuffle things around. Um, and it may not be the organization do it, it's just individuals have access to do so. But I want to know if any of you have experience with organizations that you would actually recommend. What do they do? What is the good that they provide? Where do they operate within the country? Tell us some things about them. Uh, and if you could do so in video form, that'd be fantastic. I could clip you in and add you to uh, the show. We'll, if you have uh, the ability to do that, send me a note. We'll find a way uh, to get that. I, but I really do want to get feedback from you guys. I can tell you why it's a challenge to find those organizations now when 10 years ago it was easy. Although you don't want to have done it 10 years ago, it would be very, I'd be super sad if I had to put in a bunch of time volunteering and then found out that this was not a legitimate organization trying to do a good job. This was someone using me as a cover for, for some terrible activity or potentially terrible activity or just stealing money from donors. Um, that would be awful, right? So, so we want to know where, where is there an opportunity for this? And there's the possibility that the government may have um, opportunities for volunteering, and I just don't know where those things would be. So that's uh, something that would be fantastic to know. And of course, you can always, so that, that's the question. So please uh, either get down in the comments and just let me know about things or make a video and we'll find a way to get it here. As always, I want lots of questions and comments and, and all that. So So even if you don't have information for people, get down there and ask your questions uh, for future episodes or whatever. But so the other thing I wanted to say is uh, just because there aren't organizations for this, um, the only risk there is that they're looking for what are the opportunities and that's going to lead you to potentially bad organizations. Um, and, and it's also worth noting that I've known organizations that were here that did not get audited. Um, they may have been doing some good things, but they fled the country ahead of being audited. And very importantly, I know a lot of people who worked at some of these and while they may not have been stealing from donors, we don't know, they may not have been money laundering. What we do know for sure is that they were stealing from employees in the country. They would hire people at one rate and then pay them far less than uh, what they had promised them and say, well, it's, I'm sorry, we don't have the money anymore, which of course they knew ahead of time, um, but they got the person to quit their, their former job and now they were trapped because there's not a lot of jobs out here. So that person feels trapped and is now earning half what they thought they were going to get, they quit a job that was paying more. I've had my own employees tricked by nonprofits here, right? I've had a person who worked for us say, look, they're gonna pay me four times 
I guess it was twice, twice what we were paying them. And it was four times what they would normally have gotten. We were already paying them really well. And we're like, you have to take it, right? We're not going to hold you back. That's twice what we're paying you. That's unbelievable. This is amazing money. Like they were getting decent money with us and this was incredible. So they gave up a job they had been with for a while. And of course we don't want to punish them, but we filled that role in days. Right, we put someone else into that role and they were getting paid and they had to keep their job. And this person went to this other job, put in time and they kept saying, well, oh, oh, we're sorry, but the salary we promised you, that's actually only once you, you take this promotion and that's gonna take a few weeks to get you ready for. And then, oh, we haven't had time to get you ready for it. And that, that few weeks turned into six months. And then when the time came that it, they, they weren't able to push off the excuse anymore, they said, oh, we've decided to leave the country and hadn't been paying her for a few months and just left and never paid her at all. And they went from a promise of a ton of money to actually giving her far below minimum wage and then stopping paying altogether. Right. And then fleeing so that they couldn't be caught by the government. They got out of the country before they announced that they weren't going to pay the salaries of the people who had been here working for them for some time. So that kind of stuff is real. You don't want to be associated with those organizations and that even ones that haven't been caught, that's common behavior here. Some of the absolute worst behavior you will ever find is from NGOs. Now, some great companies exist as well, but they are the exception, not the rule. So what you can do, however, is you can find something that you're passionate about. You can find a need in your community. You can find uh, a thing that you're able to do and get involved. I know uh, the Budgeteers, they're a backpacking group who does YouTube channels. Uh, they came here to Nicaragua and they helped build uh, bathrooms right here in Ponaloya, the beach, right? And a lot of my employees, kids use the school that has those bathrooms. And they film some of their episodes literally 10 feet away from my old bedroom uh, on the beach. So uh, we really know where they were and what they did. They didn't get involved with an NGO. As far as I know, they just knew there was a need came up with some money from their YouTube channel to make a difference, bought the supplies and built privies for this, for this school. That's the kind of thing that you can do. You don't need an organization. If you're not trying to make money here, you're absolutely allowed to volunteer in case that needed to be said. Of course you can do good things for free. That's anywhere you can do that, right? Even in North Korea, they would let you do that under normal circumstances. If you want to uh, volunteer and teach English, you can, if you want to, uh, but not with an organization necessarily, just do it yourself. You just do the thing you wanna do. You wanna build bathrooms, you wanna build wells, you wanna uh, build schools. I don't know if you have those skills, but if you have the skills, do it yourself. Just get out there, find someone who needs it and start doing the thing. My dog is going crazy. And, uh, you know, if you want to run a little school for six or seven local kids are going to come and learn English from you, I assume you speak English, then that's great. There's all these little things that you can do based on what your skill set is, where you can volunteer directly, but not volunteer with an organization. There's no need for that. You can just do the thing yourself and make the difference directly if that's what you want to do. There's there's lots of ways to do good for the community. Well, you could get out there and do promotions. There's something that I volunteer, volunteer right, with some non-corporate stuff, just people um, going out and, and helping get information out about um, artists and, and uh, literary groups and stuff in the country, like helping them connect. I just put in some of my time doing that. And I think that's really um, important for the community and it's something I'm able to do that I know some some things that some some people don't like maybe I help them make a website um, and it, it, things like that I'm not doing so through an NGO I'm not working with a nonprofit nothing like that but it's like oh you need a website yeah I can do that for you right you need someone to make banners okay I'm not that guy but you could do that like any number of very simple things like that you could make a very huge difference without having to uh, deal with an organization to make it happen. So those are some ideas, but I wanna know everyone else's. Get down there in those comments. I know there's gonna be a lot of comments about nonprofits and all the problems that they bring, but they really do. I've done this for a long time. They are things to watch out for. And I know that good ones get really good at hiding this, even from their own employees. You could be working at one and have no idea that they're stealing like crazy. And there are some that are not like this. There are exceptions. My father once had this exact same speech with a nonprofit, He was, but he wasn't talking to them as a nonprofit. He was talking to the CEO of that nonprofit 
who did not get a salary, by the way, um, and was talking about how uh, me and my, my company had volunteered with so many nonprofits and had found every time that they, they either just outright banned any volunteers in professional positions who might uncover things, or as soon as we were involved, we immediately were in an ethical position where we had to expose the money laundering or just outright theft, and, and then the, we would be walked right out the door rather than fixing the problem because they always, already knew about it and were very aware that that is where their money was going and, and that is what they wanted. Um, and this one time, this is 20 years ago, literally 20 years ago this year, uh, he had this conversation and the person was mortified. And he ran a bunch of checks to make sure we had never talked to his organization. And he came back and he's like, I don't think they've ever talked to us. If they're actually willing to volunteer, we're actually willing to take them. And, uh, and we ended up volunteering for about a year and a half, built their entire IT infrastructure, did a ton of things with them. Um, and I, I hope we made a good positive difference. Um, we won some awards with, with them as an organization and, um, and, and they really were trying to do good things um, and, and it showed, but they were really unique. And, and their reaction was to panic and audit themselves, right? Um, so, so those things do exist. I'm not saying it's 100%, but it's a very, very tough thing. It is easier to uh, pass pass a camel through the eye of a needle, I think, than to have a nonprofit that is actually altruistic. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to help support the channel. We are a for-profit. This comes to me to fund my camera and vlogging addiction. So don't think of it as a donation so much as helping to make this possible. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. And as always, please share on social media, post wherever it is that, that you hang out outside of this channel. If you hang out nowhere but this channel, thank you for choosing us. That's amazing. And uh, tell your friends and family about the show. Hope you are getting ready for New Year's, which is coming up very soon. And I will see all of you tomorrow.